Satan and his kingdom are under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, if you want God's reward, you got to die from your flesh. God's rewards are infinite times, eternally times greater than what the devil could ever offer to you. The devil's rewards are low, 1%, but God's are eternal. When God rewards you, he rewards you with spiritual eternal rewards that are far beyond any amount of money. The devil rewards you with temporary things that do nothing but, it's not even a reward. It's a temporary gain, but it destroys your soul. It destroys your flesh. It destroys your mind. And it blinds you and you become his. But in Christ, God gives you eternal artifacts that you gain by worshiping Him, serving Him, knowing Him, spending time with Him. And you have to see, you have to die from your flesh and come into the Spirit and covenant with God to get that reward. The devil's always going to reward you according to your flesh. And your flesh, I don't care how long you've been a pastor, who you are, your flesh naturally wants to rebel against God. Your flesh wants to watch porn. It wants to fornicate. It wants a bunch of money. It's always focused on temporary things. You have to die from that mindset, from that way of thinking. And you have to get in the spirit of God. When you're in his presence and it's around you, you won't even you don't even think about money. You don't you realize that you have everything in the kingdom of heaven, which is eternal. Far greater than you understand that the money, the job, you, everything you do is just a blink of an eye on this earth. But when you're in God's presence, you begin to flow in the eternal riches, the eternal life of God. And you realize that God is real, heaven is real. But see, heaven is a real place, but you got to activate it. You got to tap into it by prayer daily. Getting around, you got to see the keys and what can you do more and push. But the devil will give you that mindset, well, you're not doing enough. You're not all, all these things that will discourage you. He's trying to discourage you. And he wants to give you that carnal mindset of, what if I do this wrong? Or what if I mess up? Or what if I did all this for nothing? These are carnal mindsets of the enemy. In Christ, as long as you are surrendered to him and you're persevering him and you're holding on and you do not ever give up, it will be impossible to lose. If you don't give up and you keep persevering, not just believing and letting go, the moment you start letting go, it don't matter how much you believe in Jesus, the moment you start giving up on him, Giving up on Jesus is not dis, uh, dis, uh, saying that he doesn't exist or that you believe in him, you believe he's the Lord and Savior. But when you stop living for him, when you start stepping back and giving up, that's giving up on the Lord. But as long as you don't give up and you keep praying and pushing, you cannot lose. God made it very simple. It's not hard at all. That's why he came down and died on the cross. He already did all the work. He did everything. You don't have no work to do. But to worship Him, to go to church, to spend time with Him, to let go of those sinful ways. It's not about how perfect and good you are. It's about how perfect and good God is. The more you realize that, the more easier it will be to let go of those sins. And you won't have that stronghold of, oh, I fell into it again, I might as well give up. It's not a point sheet of how many rights you do and how many wrongs. Jesus already died on the cross. You're already victorious. You're already holy. And the more you surrender to that and know that, okay? Thank you, Jesus, for this food. Blessed Lord God Almighty. I pray nationwide, worldwide, every soul that is thirsty and hungry for you, Lord God Almighty. Send the angels forth. I send them forth to bring manna from heaven unto your people. Jerusalem, from the north, east, south, and west, everyone who is hungry, Father. Give them food right now. Supply them. Everyone under the bridge. Everyone homeless. Everyone addicted to something, everyone in pain, every child crying out. I commission and command my angels to bring them blessings now and to feed them. Father, I thank you that I have food to eat. I thank you that I have a home with peace and a mother that loves me. I thank you that I have a son that's healthy. I thank you for all the opportunities and blessings you've given me. Help me to realize and see how good 
and wonderful you are and not to focus on the money and the temporary things that don't last. This is the eternal value, the security I have in you, the peace I have, the salvation that's in my family. This is worth more than all the money in the world. And I love you and I give you glory and I thank you, God Almighty. Amen. Your God, my God, is holy. Jesus loves you. He's the only way to God, eternal life, and the kingdom of heaven. It's not about what you did and how good you are. It's what he did on the cross. That blood is what sets you free. That blood is what gives you power. That blood is what redeems you back to God. That blood is what crushes Satan in his kingdom. That blood is what rips through addiction and family issues. That blood is what keeps you in the right path. That blood is what saves you and keeps you holy. That blood is what keeps you free and sets you off with light. That blood is the passageway to life. That blood is the passageway to eternity. Bless this food, God Almighty. I bless you, God Almighty. I lift you up, Lord. I lift this food up. I lift my family up. I lift my son up. I lift this house up. I lift my viewers up. I lift the channels up. I lift the firefighters, the police department all over the world, the people that are hungry, the people that are starving, the people that sin, the people that are focused on you. Touch them, Jesus. Save this world. Save our nation. Save our people. In Jesus' name. Satan and his army strategize against you. They come up with tactics, timings, themes, people, thought processes to lure you in. The devil is cunning and tricky and has supernatural intelligence and power. But the one that lives in you is infinite times greater, more powerful. And Satan in all of his power, all of his kingdom, all of his demons, all of his hierarchy. But your job is, and the problem with society, we have to tap into Christ. You have to get deep and deep in the presence of God. And the more you realize and the more you're in God's presence, the more heaven and God becomes a reality. Your power in heaven becomes more real than your natural limitations on earth. Your flesh is gonna die. Money's gonna burn. That car's gonna explode. This house is gonna melt. This atmosphere and all the elements of it are gonna be burned with fire and diminished. You do not hold on and go to focus points of fleshly things, temporary things. That's what the devil does. He gets your mind on temporary things in the flesh. And when you do that and put your mind and focus and energy on that, you're actually separating your life and belief from God's word and giving the enemy an advantage. That's why when you realize who you are in Christ, in Christ, and through your faith and your understanding of experiential knowledge and experiencing his presence, his miracles, by spending deep, deep, deep time with God, you will realize how powerful you are inside. You will realize that you have all things in Christ. You are literally sitting enthroned with Christ in the eternal kingdom of heaven. What you have is far greater than all the money, all the treasures and the temporary riches of this earth, which get dusty and fade away. Eternal desires, eternal promotions, eternal upgrades, eternal transformations, infinite knowledge. It belongs to you. This is greater than any money in the world. The devil tries to get you in a political mindset, a Pharisee mindset, a demonic mindset. They teach you doctrines of demons and mix it in with the Bible to confuse you. See what the enemy does? He doesn't give you the, the truth of God's word. He takes it, he mixes it, he twists it for your own pleasure to make you feel good about it's okay that you sin. It's okay that you have sex. It's okay to watch porn. It's not a big deal. God will forgive you. He twists this, and it's not because we're stupid or dumb, because only the Holy Ghost can give you divine understanding and wisdom of God. There's call, I don't care how, if you went to college for 15 years, if you're the greatest professor in the world, if you're the best scientist who ever existed, even the scientists who are geniuses, they have no spiritual common sense because they do not possess the Holy Ghost. Not because they're dumb, because only the Holy Spirit can reveal the truths, the identity, common sense on the things of God. Only the Holy Spirit can give you the desire, teach you how to pray, teach you how to worship. You cannot do this on your own. And the devil's always trying to get your mind and your concern and your focus 
Your mind connects to your heart, connects to your beliefs. If it can get your mind to believe something, it will produce a thought. And that thought will turn into a manifestation of how you live. And you will literally live that thought and believe it. And you will inherit the emotions of what you believe and live. All right? That's why you have to stay in the Word of God. You have to study it. You have to break it down. You have to use one phone to read, read uh, scriptures, get on the internet. See, the, the, God, there is no excuse for anybody that goes to hell. It's not because God sent them there. It's because they chose. God gives everyone, a, when you have breath and life, God will give everyone eternal amount, infinite amount of times to repent and change. He never stops pursuing us. Every second he's talking to us, pursuing us. us. But we have to die from our human understanding and get into God's presence to realize God doesn't just talk as we think he talks. It's through signs, it's through your DNA, it's through your emotions, it's through your eyes, it's through silence, it's through the molecules in there. God speaks and reflects and reveals things. He covers things for us, not from us. As we in tune into the Holy Spirit and our discernment sharpens, we begin to unlock the deep mysteries of God. And that's more exciting, that journey, than gaining everything. And God wants you to have money. But more important than money, he wants to be your provider. He's going to provide. There are over 2,000 scriptures about finances in the Bible. But you have to get it right with God. See, God's not just going to hear, here's a million dollars. He wants you to go through the trial, learn the responsibility, acquire the eternal traits, let your character build, and trust you with a little bit of amount. That's why it's always like God's doing... It's like God does these little... It's like every... He rewards you tiny by tiny, and it seems like, oh, the devil can give you all this at once. The devil can give you all the money in the world. He can give you all the sex, all the fame. But what is that equal to? Nothing but terror, destruction, darkness, misery, and eternal failure. Blindness, greed, selfishness, and death. That's what that leads to. But when you sacrifice from the ways of this world, the thought processes of man, the desires of money, you separate your mind, your thoughts, your feeling, your emotions, from Satan's territory and you tap into God's and heaven becomes a reality to you God becomes more real to you you cannot do, look through the eyes of judgment or what you think well I feel God he allows children to get raped he allows bad things to happen and I don't you can't reason with your own carnal mind you will fail every single time I don't care if you have a PhD a master's degree if you try to reason the things of the Spirit with your natural mind, you will fail every time and the devil will steal your revelation from God, steal your reward from God, steal your understanding of God every time. Okay? And it's not just one time. You have to constantly nurture and root what God is showing you and to see how it's building. What You start to see the structure. It's like you're building a house. They already have the layout, the map. But then they got to go physically build it. Well, that's what God does. He'll show you the layout, the map of your reward, of your treasure. But you have to, tr if you don't trust in God, if you don't think he's a good and an amazing father and that he's holy and everything he does is for your better, those thought processes will twist demonically. And you will not receive the full offer God has for you. See, God gave us self-will and you have to worship him from that. Why didn't God make everything perfect? If God made everything perfect, we would have no self-will. We'd be robots. That would bring no pleasure to God. Our life would be miserable. You would be designed, programmed to just do this. There would be no self-will. There would be no choices. There would no be feelings of want or, or not knowing. There would be no ecstasy when you get a reward. There would be no, man, I messed up. I got to work. There would be no courage. There would be no boldness. There would be none of that. Okay? God knows what he's doing. He knows what he did. When he created the world, he already knew Adam was going to sin. He already knew that Lucifer was going to fall. He already knew that people were going to choose to go to hell. He already knew that. But he made these things, these eternal imprints, where it's not his fault. You cannot blame him. He gives you every opportunity, every choice to choose him over and over, to get it right, over and over. Okay? He knows what he's doing. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wisdom. Thank you for this understanding. Let me teach people what I know. 
God has filled me up with so revelation and knowledge and understanding and power and I've had genuine encounters with Jesus. I've seen Jesus face to face. I've seen Satan face to face. I've had visitations in the spirit. God, I can tell you supernatural testimony over and over and over again. And I thank God for allowing me to experience him. All right, I'm going to stop this and we're going to See, continue. God created us as his prized possession. A lot of times Christians, we always look on the layers of, well, how can God reward me? How can God benefit me? Can God give me money? God, I want this. What can God do for me? There's nothing wrong with that. But when you go to the higher layer, how can I reward God? How can I bless God? The God who has everything, what can I possibly give to him? Then you gain access to him. Full access, not limited access. Your thought processes are the ones that give you access to God. You have a corner way of thinking. Your mind cannot go higher. Therefore, your spirit cannot rise. Therefore, promotion and God cannot reward you with more revelation, promotion, and understanding. You, wouldn't, you know, see, God is so amazing. If you're on this level of thought and he tries to give you a higher level of revelation, understanding, breakthrough, miracle, your level of thinking will pervert it. It will actually make you twist and hate him and not comprehend him and be confused and give up on God. That's why God doesn't just come out of the sky and give you, here, here's this, all this divine knowledge, all this divine revelation, all this divine, divine, you would not be able to handle it. Your mind, your thinking has to elevate. It takes time, stages, seasons. Then your capacity increases. As your mind increases, just like your brain increases, your spiritual capacity increases. Then God can fill you with more. God is so too much powerful for us, too infinite. If he was to rain even a percent of him on us, we would all fall down and die. We cannot handle it. Okay? So the reward and the transformation is not determined on God, by God, but not on God. It's determined on you. How much are you seeking God? How much are you really getting into his presence? How hungry are you for God? How much wisdom and knowledge do you have of his word? What's your prayer life like? What are your thoughts about heaven? How many demons have you faced? You need experience. Just like in college, they give you hands-on training. You get certificates. You work. It's the same thing in the Holy Spirit. The devil doesn't want you to know your identity and who you are. That's why he attacks your identity. He makes you doubt who you are in Christ. He makes you doubt what Christ did for you. And see, it's not just one trick. Let's say if the enemy throws lust at you. It's not just lust. You have to break it down into the multitude things that it does. Lust, perversion, immorality, sin, greed, which causes loneliness, which causes separation from light and God, which surrounds you with much darkness, which takes you away from your covenant with Jesus. The devil doesn't just come just to hear, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tempt him with lust. He comes with a formula, a strategy of multiple ways to get you at one time. Because it's not just one demon working against you, but one thing, just like doubt. Doubt leads to denial. Denial leads to self-denial. That leads to rebuking God and denying the existence of a higher power. That leads to misery, depression, suicide, cancer, which leads to physical sickness, which leads to mental health, and death. But faith, even atheists who don't believe in God will tell you the same thing I'm telling you, but faith gives you joy, gives you hope, which gives you future, which gives you power, which gives you strength, which produces the emotions of joy, peace, and happiness, and love, which make everything in your life better. The enemy knows how to attack your emotions. He knows how to attack your mind, but the Holy Spirit will give you wisdom over this to expose the enemy. And the devil wants you to be afraid of him. He wants you to fear, well, if I expose him, he's going to come with his army and mess me up, or he's going to attack me. I probably shouldn't say this because I'll get attacked. That's why the Christians are failing. You should never fight the devil on the defense. You should be fighting him on the offense. He should be backing up in corners and running from you. Okay. 
the enemy is very organized. He's been doing this for years. But the one that lives inside of you knows eternity, knows infinite. It's seven trillion times, infinite times ahead of Satan. The one that lives inside of you knows every strategy the devil will ever use against you. The one that lives inside of you knows everything. But you have to tap into him on a soul level, not just, well, I prayed, our Father in heaven, I went to Bible study. No. You've got to spend time seeking, searching, talking, communicating, researching God, like in your spirit, in your mind, in your thoughts, with people. you got to get on that soul level. That's where the reality of God, the reality of Jesus Christ is more real than the natural. Okay? Let me give you some steps. You must learn to command your angels. You don't pray to angels. You don't worship, you command them. There are millions of angels all over the world that are not able to fight demons, that are not able to bring blessings, that are not able to bring transformation because people, the Christians, will not command them. For me, the demons I used to fight or the dark things that would be on me all day, now in five seconds when I command my angel, Archangel Michael, I command you to come with the angels and to fight this dark cloud, to fight the demonic spirits of lust, to fight the irritation, to fight everything over my family in this house and to make it leave now. In five seconds, before they would torment me for hours, in five seconds, it's gone. Then heaven opens up and I feel the joy and the glory and power of God. In five seconds. Okay. Command your angels. Write something down. Deliverance. Deliverance is a daily thing. Deliverance, there's steps. You acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you need Christ. You acknowledge that you have a problem with lust, that you have a problem with money, that you have a problem with relationships. You acknowledge, you renounce and you reject. I renounce, I reject everything that's not of God. You renounce and you reject everything that's not of God. You can do specific names and just say everything that's not God. You confront the problem, then you command it to leave it. Daily, you've got to do deliverance on yourself so you can be completely free, whether there's generational curses on your life, whether there's doors Satan has on you, whether there's strongholds or there's spirits in you. When you do deliverance, these things will be exposed and leave you. And God will reveal to you and he will teach you how to break the curses off your life so you can walk in perfectness. Okay? You command your angels. You do deliverance. You have to know your Bible. You have to know your Bible. You have to be violent in your faith. You don't say a bunch of stuff. You gotta learn the legal things in heaven, how the courtroom of heaven operates. You have to grow, you, and your relationship with God determines everything. The power, the anointing, the glory, the presence, the fire that you carry is determined by the intimacy you have with Jesus. The more intimate you are with Jesus, childlike love, I love you Lord, Just not even always asking him stuff, but just spending time and telling him how much you love him and worshiping him and tell him how great, write poems to him. It's like making love to the Spirit of God. The more you do this, the closer you get to God. The closer you get to God, demons won't even want to mess with you. Satan, he'll think five times before he comes against you. They're still going to strategize and come, but they're going to know that this one right here, he's close to God. This one right here knows his authority. This one right here carries some serious fire. Okay? I will stop and I will. I command the angels of God to surround my mind, to shield my heart, shield my soul, shield my body, shield my mother, shield my dad, shield my son, shield my church. Release fire from heaven upon my life, seraphims from the throne room flying around Jehovah. Give me revelation, give me insight, pour out blue heavenly fire all over my soul and all over my shield, all over my body. Lord Jesus, give me fresh oil, give me fresh bread, give me a fresh anointing. Fill me with power, fill me with your word, fill me with glory. Let the gates of heaven open up, let the gates of heaven open up, let the gates of prosperity open up, let the gates of miracles, miracles open up. Power, power, supernatural power. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise. I come before your throne not asking for nothing, but just to decree and make a vow to you that I will love you. I'm committed to you, Jesus Christ. My soul, my heart, my life, I break it and I give it to you. It's not mine. I hand over my life. I hand over my spirit. I hand over my soul, my mind, my body, my DNA to you. You are number one in my life, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your blood, that cross, you risen from the grave. You are resurrected, seated at the right hand of the Father. 
You're my advocate. Pray for me, Lord. Fight for me, Lord. Shine on me, Lord. Show me the way. Give me the opportunity. Mold me into your image. I release the power, the virtues, the dominions from heaven. Establish the throne. Sit on the throne of my heart, God Almighty. Sit on the throne of my spirit. Let me give birth to new ideas. Give me creativity. Give me a strength. Let me run the race with power. Let me rip through Satan with ease. I take the horns of the beast and I rip them. I cut the head of the dragon and I slice it an extra time. Every beast, every demonic force coming against me. I take the crown of Christ. I crown it on my head. The blood of Jesus drips. You cannot touch me. I command 150,000 angels with swords of fires. Get suited up. Ready for war. And to go into battle upon my enemies and the forces of darkness and to shield me. Stab them, slice them, eliminate them, torment them, whip them, pick them up and choke slam them, body slam them. Don't let them breathe oxygen. Set them on fire. Bring the wrath of God and pour it out. Bring the sword of God and pour it out. Bring the fire from on high and pour it out on my enemies. I slice the head of the enemy. I slice the horns of the beast. I slice the foul tormented spirits coming against me. I slice every gargoyle, every ghost, every fallen angel, every deity, every principality. Release your sword, God Almighty. Release your wrath, God Almighty. Thunder in the heaven. Christ in my Jesus, I torment every devil, I torment every demon, I torment every satanic chain, chamber attack, every deity, every spirit of the moon coming against your life. I rip it in half. I command the angels of God that surround you to bring you wisdom, to bring you intelligence, to bring you the gifts, to bring you the power, to bring you the momentum, to bring you the treasure, to bring you the fire, to bring you the story. History, everything is a testimony. Let everything in your life be a testimony. Give God glory every second, every minute, every day of your life. Let the anointing intensify. Let the power and the glory and the victory of Jesus Christ intensify. Let the angels gotta sing and rejoice. I release the fire of God on you. I release an important wisdom and revelation, understanding, knowledge, the gifts of the Holy Ghost into your body, into your soul, interpretation of nations. And I declare and prophesy over your life, you shall go to the nations. You will declare and you will make music for God and you will make shirts for God and you will do things for the Lord. Gift packages from heaven I release upon to you. Artifacts of God I release upon you. Unparted wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and know-how. Impartation, impartation, revelation, revelation, and knowing and understanding that the Lord God Almighty is King. Dreams and visitations from heaven, angelic visitations I release unto you. To see into the spirit, to hear into the spirit, I break everything that would try to hinder your destiny and alter you of you, your son, your daughter. I release future generational blessings upon your life. I break every generational curse. I break every demonic attack. I break everything in your bloodline. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over your bloodline. Over your bloodline, your daddy will be lifted up and he will love the Lord. Everybody that surrounds you will be lifted up and love the Lord. Keep making that music for the Lord. Keep worshiping God. Keep giving glory to the King Most High. Keep ripping through the devil. Keep sacrificing and crucifying your flesh to the cross. Dying to yourself daily. Giving God glory every second of every minute until the power becomes so strong, it becomes so real. Your prayers become so intense that when you pray, the nations tremble. The demons fall down. Miracles in heaven and the kingdom of God opens up when you pray. Keep exercising your tongues. Glory to Jesus, we lift you up, Lord God Almighty, we praise and we worship you, please, absolutely, there's no God like my God, he's high and holy, there's nothing that stands between the love of the living God, the power of the Most High, reigning the triumph of the Lion of Judah is victorious, undefeated, the Most High champion for all eternity. Victory belongs to you, God Almighty. Glory belongs to you, Lord God Almighty. Holiness belongs to you, Lord God Almighty. Reigning in triumph and victory in Christ Jesus. The blood is on my sword, oil dripping from my armor, ready for war. Demons better tremble, Satan better back up. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory. We give you glory and praise. <coughs> I've been yelling and I've been worshiping God all day. 
My voice will never lose because my mind will speak. My emotions will speak. My energy will speak. The light that's in me will speak. My Holy Ghost will speak. Listen to the angels in heaven. Listen to them in heaven. Heaven, open up over my life. Open up your gates, Lord. To your presence is where I want to dwell. Dwell inside my heart. Dwell inside my soul. Dwell inside my life. Dedicated to you. Forever I'm going to give you the glory that's due unto your name. Holy Spirit, take me to heaven journey before my father you've been heaven and holy and righteous covered in the rope of your train standing up focus on your power Jesus I love you Jesus I want you Jesus I need you Amen